I love Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> you love so much. her. I love her. I think she's iconic. And, you know, I like, I love everything about her. Um, she released a new song. And maybe there's some things that I don't like about her. <laughs> and that that I think could probably just not have been made. But, you know, it, an, an attempt was made and a song definitely was made. And um, it's so funny because, like, I've just been seeing people being so mean to her on TikTok. And I feel so bad. But, like, because half of it's, like, turfs. And then half of it is just, like, people being like, this is just a cringe song. And I fall, obviously, on that half. But it's just, like, this poor girl can't catch a break. I think something about Dylan that has really brought forward to society is that just because you're trans or just because you identify a certain way, if somebody criticizes you, it's not automatically seen as like transphobia, right? Because trans people, as wonderful as we are, we can be bad at things and we can do things that may be a little bit embarrassing and that's okay to point out. Like in this instance, I'm so happy for her that she was able to make this song and feel good about it. And it, sorry, Jordan is like attacking my desk right now. But like, I get it, you know, like Days of Girlhood, so cute. Like you're finding your femininity, but it's not a good song. And that's okay to say, as long as your criticism lies with the song and not like, oh, I hate that stupid bitch. Like, obviously that's hateful. But like, if you're just like, I don't like this song, that's not transphobic. That's just you having an opinion and having ears. I think the beautiful thing about trans people is that we come in all shapes and sizes and and and, and, and some of us are more embarrassing than the others. Are we all embarrassing? A little bit, but some more than others for sure. Um, and yeah, so... I view Dylan's song the same way I view like Jojo Siwa's music where I'm like, oh, like I wouldn't, you're not like, ah, this is so mean to say, but like, you're just not like, <laughs> you're just maybe like this not isn't talented. the avenue for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying she's that talented. I'm just saying like, maybe it's just not the avenue for you at the moment. Yeah. Maybe like other yeah. endeavors would be better suited at this time in her career, I think. Yeah, and, and I you know, I think, like, yeah, <laughs> I agree. I, it, it does suck, though, because you, you are seeing, like, a lot of, like, turfs being, like, oh, she's, like, tr- trivializing womanhood or she's, like, making a mockery of womanhood. In order to be a woman, you first have to understand how to respect women, and this song doesn't respect women. I've been seeing people, like, say that. And to me, it's just so, like... It's just like, to me, it's like a silly, like, pop song. It's cringe, but it's just a pop song. And, like, I feel like every just, like, pop song, like, girl anthem is, like, all the pretty much the same. This one's just, like, centers around the fact that she's trans. So, I don't know. If, to me, it's just, like, so silly. I think it is silly. At the end of the day, it. how many other artists have sung songs just about femininity or even masculinity? And nobody says anything. But then a trans person does it and now it's like a mockery of womanhood, which I don't think it is. So, yeah, I think at the end of the day, my opinion is that, is it a good song? No. But does she deserve the hate that she's getting? I don't think so. At least in that way. Like, just simply say you don't like the song. And for whatever reason, you don't have to be transphobic and bring her down and try to invalidate her identity at the same time like that's that's not necessary yeah to me it's just entertaining altogether like the idea of just like it not like her making music and it not being that good it's just like to me it's just funny Mm -hmm. it's like i get the same entertainment as i get with like i said jojo siwa's like gummy bear song yeah because why does her song sound like the gummy bear song it kind of feels like a fever dream you know how sometimes you're dreaming and Things, real life things are happening, but it's a little more like out there and strange than it would be in real life. That's how I feel when I listen to that song. It's like it it genuinely is a real song, but something about it makes me feel like I'm in a daze and it's not real. (laughs) 
It makes me feel like you're on drugs. Yeah. Just listening honestly. to this song. I mean, honestly, I like understand what you mean. Jojo Siwa's whole like career, the way that it's um are you are we talking about Jojo Siwa? Are we talking Can we talk about, about have you seen that TikTok of her with like the black tank top on and she's like leaning? Oh my god. Over the phone. Yeah, like, trying to show off yeah. her tattoos. That made me so severely uncomfortable. It was very crazy. I was scared of her. I don't know if you saw, and I, I, this is all, this is all based off a of TikTok I saw. This is what I think. A lot of people matched her tattoos. People were saying her tattoos don't look real because I've never seen a tattoo that fades that way. And it seems like they popped out of nowhere. And you think if the tattoo was new, it would, look it would here. be dark. You could tell. Yeah. But like people are like, those look like a little ink box tattoo. And they found a lot of them on ink box. So people are saying, oh, there, she's just trying to, like, look like this other, like, lesbian um, musician G-flip. who, like, yeah, everyone's saying <laughs> she's trying to look like G-Flab. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting. I, I saw a video of G-Flab going through my TikTok, and I thought it was JoJo Siwa. And then everyone was commenting that. And so, yeah. She was cosplaying. Such- that's what it was. You can't be like I'm rebranding myself. You can't say that and like not not like like it's you you just can't do that. Like I think that's <laughs> what the cringe part is. It's just the fact that she's like I'm rebranding. I'm an adult now. Like, yeah. It, like I just got a whole full sleeve, but in reality, mm-hmm. I just put them on my arm two seconds ago and I got them out of the box. Yeah, there's not like self awareness, and I think that it's really funny the. I just love the content. I'm just here for it. Yeah. I think, um, I don't know. I think anyone that grows up as a child star, that kind of opens up another conversation. Have you seen anything about the Nickelodeon documentary? Yeah. I am. Um, I was, I literally have been waiting for it. I've been oh. for years um, because I was such a fan of Nickelodeon yeah. and I've always heard people talk about like Dan Schneider. So when I saw the documentary, I literally sat there until nine and then like streamed it on HBO because I was like, I need to know. And um, it was crazy. Yeah. Did you finish it? No, Did we didn't it? finish it. We watched like the first episode and a half. But I was more of a Disney child. I did watch the Amanda show and all that and some shows. But I don't know. It It's actually insane. Like, mm-hmm. especially as a child watching those things. Obviously, you would never think, wow, like that. that's a little weird at that time but now looking back that's fucking weird like penelope taint penelope taint. penelope taint that's crazy her name, and her name that like that was the intention like to have taint yeah with that meaning as the last name as a, like, i don't i don't know and like i don't know people have been talking about i've been seeing it on they didn't mention it in um the actual the documentary but people were talking about how the Amanda show, like Penelope Taint would always say a website because her catchphrase was Amanda, please. And it sounds like a man to please. And so, yeah. And that was the website. And on the website, there was like weird, like people like did an archive of it. And there was like weird links for videos that you can click on. And it was like dirty feet or it would say like weird stuff. And like, it's just definitely fetish content that was like made like exploited kids with it. It was just like really weird. And at the time, because I think the idea of like random randomness and like this like crazy, like outrageous comedy is so funny for kids. But, um, but I feel like that was like such an easy disguise for like people like Dan Schneider to just like take, do whatever he wants and just literally film kids feet like a crazy person. Yeah. I feel like, if you are twisted enough in your head, you can really look at anything and kind of turn it into something that you can use to like yeah. do nefarious things. But I feel like on Nickelodeon, there were so many times where it was very obviously geared towards a specific audience. Like there's no reason a child should have their feet on camera, let alone like putting their foot in their mouth or like things like that are just so weird now that you're an adult and you look back on it. So it makes me really sad for Amanda Bynes and like a lot of other people that grew up on that network because I don't know. I just feel like a lot of them are so talented, but we didn't really get to see the full scope of their talent because they 
literally went crazy for obvious reasons. Yeah, like watching the Drake Bell stuff too. I don't think you've gone to it. Yet. I haven't. No. But um, yeah, that was um, like I was literally tearing up. It just made me really sad. Um, that like certain people were allowed on set, and then, and you know things were happening to to kids on on the scenes. It's crazy because you like know that child actors go through a lot. Like you see on Disney, they like truly like put these kids like Miley Cyrus, um. Demi Lovato, they like go through like heavy things, but like Disney Channel did not. I don't know if I've heard or have seen a joke that like is questionable the way that you've seen it happen on Nickelodeon because the guy that made all those jokes was like in charge of for some reason he was like the the cartoon person. And don't get me like I love I love iCarly, I love Drake and Josh, I love the Amanda Show, um, and even Victorious. It's funny because I look back at Victorious and I think about certain scenes or certain episodes. And I remember because I was becoming that age where I was like developing into my sexuality. I was like, these, all these people are just like really hot. Like, why are they like half naked, all of them in a, in an RV? And like, it just was like, it's just like crazy. Cause like, it's, it's just for kids. And then like, they just have stuff like that. So I don't know. Weird. Yeah, it just makes me feel like very icky, honestly. Yeah. I don't like it. And it's scary. Like, as a child in the industry, there's so much pressure on them because they have to provide for their family. And then you're being told by somebody that has power over you that you have to do a certain thing. You're like, oh, well, I have to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to get kicked off the show or I'm not going to become a star or whatever the case is. So it's such an unfair way to take advantage of a child and yeah and it it definitely sucks because I, I know for a lot of child actors they were supporting their parents like fully like i read uh josh peck's memoir he doesn't resent his mom or anything um like i know other child stars do but he was fully supporting his mom and he still does um and to me that's just like crazy that like you can't like have your source of income be like relying on your child and like it just makes me really sad because then you put them in positions where they need to make money to feed y'all so they can't say no to certain things they just have to keep like they have to have that weight of an adult as a child to me it's just i personally and this is a hot take but i don't understand the value of kids in any sort of media like to me i'm like it honestly like a lot of things i watch anyways don't like i guess stranger things had a kid cast and that was like really iconic and and um, maybe we're in a day and age where it can be done. But I like look back at like certain kids content. And I'm, to me, I'm just like, why do we even need kids in, in, in things? So my radical idea is like, just don't put kids in stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can just have adults play them. It's not really that big of a deal. Flash forward 10 years when I have a child. <laughs> I'm just putting them in yeah. everything. Yeah. Make monthly. me money. Make a YouTube channel. Dance monkey. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, mm-hmm. prayers to anyone and well wishes to anyone who was employed by Nickelodeon in the early 2000s because I know. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Did you see what like the net declassified people said on a live stream? I know there's some crazy shit with that show. Yeah. You have to finish watching the Drake Bell stuff to like really understand it. But like, yeah, the Nets declassified was on a live stream and they made a joke about like, show me your holes, Dan, or something like that. And then they said Drake's name and then it just like came off like really like not cool because like the nature of like the things that happened to Drake Bell were so serious. So a lot of people are mad at them. And did you watch Boy Meets World growing up? Yeah. On and off. I, Emily and I rewatched the whole thing and it's so good. But like now some of the people in Boy Meets World are under fire. There's like, um, there's like big actors. Um, what's his name? The the guy, the big actor in Jury Duty. Do you know his name? Jury Duty. Actor. James Marston. Yeah, he's under. I saw that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. You just have to. You have to watch it because, like, it's crazy. You just can't like anyone in Hollywood. You no. really can't. Yeah. Well, speaking of Hollywood, I have not seen the Dune two movie, but you have. I have twice actually. That's really funny. 
you know, but you had to go me. back. I love the fact that because I genuinely, when I said when I mentioned it to you, I didn't know, think that you were going to watch it. I thought you, yeah. you would, but I didn't think you would like it. So the fact that you actually enjoy it and we're now like trying to read the book is so funny to me. <laughs> yeah. So you told me that I should watch it. And honestly, it was on my list for a really long time. And so um, Emily and I just never got around to it because Emily and I just like aren't that crazy like sci-fi fans. Like it's like whatever. And so uh, I was just like, I was like, fuck it. And um, we both just put it on because Zendaya's in it. So, I mean, we have to watch everything Zendaya's in. And amazing, like amazing movie. And at the time I was reading um, The Martian uh, by, what the fuck's his name? Andy Wurr. Um, I have this book now too, Hail Mary. But I was like, maybe I do like sci-fi because like I really love space shows. Um, we recently watched Silo on Apple TV, which I also have just bought the book for. Um, and that was really good. I love shows like that. And then once we watched Dune, I was like, this is amazing. And I was like, so in. I've been watching like before even watching Dune, I watched videos prepping to memorize like the names of people and like the significance of, of certain things just so I could understand it watching it. And yeah, we both were like, we have to read the book. So um, we both have bought the book. It's in our hands. I am on and... page seven, but <laughs> I'm going to get to it, okay? I'm going to read it. It's pretty intense at times, like trying to like understand the way that it's written. Because it's been it was written in, I think, the 60s. Um, it was written a long ass time ago. What does it say? I have heard that it's a diff. It can be a difficult read. So, yeah, I have nineteen. Or sorry, it's written in 1984, 1965, 1965. Yeah. So, I'm kind of scared. I mean, I haven't read a book in years. So the fact that this is the one that I chose to like jump back into being a reader is kind of funny because. Yeah, I was telling Emily that you know. Um, I was always like not the best reader like growing up like I could read but like I just wasn't a, f a fan of reading and I'm such a slow reader so getting to Dune I've I've prepped myself because I've read I've been reading a ton it's been like my new year's resolution or my new year's like goals is to just read a ton so like I've sort of been prepping myself to this so I was saying how like I was I was wondering how you would like in be able to like interact with this book after not reading for a little bit like was able would it, would it be like easy to pick up because you already know like the characters and stuff because for me I like I literally have a highlighter so when I'm dozing off or I'm getting confused I just go back and I'm just like highlighting it as I'm reading because it's helping me like take my time to understand the words on the page but um so there's just a lot of like highlighting in my book that means nothing it literally is just like arbitrary just because I'm like dozing off or I, I'm trying to like understand something so i'm excited yeah it's really fun um i have you haven't seen the second movie yet but i have a no, bit I of haven't. like a controversial opinion about <sighs> austin butler in the movie <laughs> i know it i know it. i i don't know what's wrong with me i genuinely don't and i don't usually watch movies and think like oh that character like is kind of cute but for some reason if you don't know who austin butler plays in the movie just google it and i know you're gonna think i'm crazy but i don't know what it is something about it just like i'm like oh like if i was in that world and he just walked by me i'd be like hey. <laughs> <laughs> what is it the bald head that does it for you i don't know the pale skin. Because I don't, genuinely, I've never been attracted to bald people. He's paper white, like genuinely paper white. He doesn't have teeth <laughs> and he doesn't have any hair on his body whatsoever. No eyebrows, bald, paper white, no teeth. I don't know. Does he, does he have the, the Elvis accent though? <laughs> Is that what does it for you? Kind, it's, it kind of sounds like a fusion of like, Pennywise and Elvis. Oh, interesting. Because so the, the guy that plays the Baron, he is related to the actor that plays Pennywise. Oh, so, Skarsgård. Yeah, for Austin Butler, like to lose his 
Elvis accent, he tried to emulate how the Baron talks. So you get that, like, everybody in that family kind of has that same kind of tone when they talk. So he kind of sounds like them, but it's also kind of like Elvis, too. Is he the Baron's nephew? Yes. Okay. He is. Because they, like, introduce him, like, like the second chapter in the book. Yeah. But I know I noticed that he wasn't in the movie, so. Yeah, he was in the first movie, but he's definitely in the second one. I, but I know they've like they changed they like a lot of the things that happen in the book do not happen the way they did in the yeah movie. they're like more freaky in the book the yeah the book so the like the way that this is getting so nerdy and Emily made fun of me because I'm just such a such a little dork here reading my my sci-fi books <laughs> but I love it I love it I'm obsessed like all of these books are just like fun I got this one wait okay I so I love silo. sci-fi so you need to if I actually can get through this book and I enjoy reading I need your recommendations because I love sci-fi definitely um I've heard this one's really good if you like space so that's probably oh, a good one to start on and Andy Ware writes fairly like he's he's a good writer it's like it's like nice and easy read where like you can go you can get through it really quickly um so I'm excited about reading this next. I also got Cersei because everyone's talking about Cersei. Um, this is more of like, do you like like Greek gods and stuff I do, like that? yeah. Um, so this is more fantasy in that aspect. Um, but everyone says she writes good. She also wrote, um, there's a book called, what the hell is it called? Um, I forget. But it's like, it's very gay. Um, Madeline... Miller, right? Wait, that sounds familiar. Yeah, Madeline Man- Miller wrote Circe, but she also wrote The Song of Achilles, and it, that's that's gay. And everyone call everyone that ever reads it always says it's their favorite book. Cool. So, but yeah, so I think Dune, though the way that it's written, is so interesting. Like the voice, the way it's described in the book is not the way it is in the movie, oh, and like the like after um in the first movie this is spoilers a little bit after they escape and they're in the tent with his mom the first night after his dad passed away um when he's in that tent and he like is having that dream or whatever and he wakes up and he gets mad and he's yelling at his mom it's so much more intense in the book and so much comes out and like it's like really like such i had my mouth was like dropped open a gate it was like so good and so i'm very excited for you to read it because i feel like what the movies don't do that the book does is able to like really portray their their feelings during certain aspects because like one of the big things that i noticed about the book was how everyone was so paranoid when they when they first got on iraqis because like they were just like they were so terrified that they were going to get betrayed they knew it was coming and there were just there was so much tension, and like you could really feel it in the book, but in the movies it just sort of kind of glossed over it. But yeah. So we're starting a book club. That was the purpose <laughs> yeah. of that whole conversation. I'm obsessed with reading. Like, don't even get me started. I will go on for days. So this is your influence on me because I'm not a reader. So you're making me Once a you like. Person. Honestly, I think books too. I'm constantly on TikTok and stuff like that. But because I've been reading, I've gotten my like screen time down so you need much. To do that. And, I, and I think that's what's really been so helpful is being able to just like stay off my phone and engage in something that like is good for the brain. Yeah, that's a good habit to have. I, I definitely need to not be on my phone as much as I am. Have you watched Silo? I started it, but. I didn't finish. I loved it. I did like it though. I maybe I should start that again. Yeah. And it's or maybe you should read the book. It's based on a book, which I'm excited yeah. about reading. We're taking one step at a time when it comes <laughs> I know. Yeah. The, well my so my job is like fairly um it's very high stakes in in the fact that I want to do like like I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I want to do a good job and I want my company to like succeed. There are like lows in the day where like things are more chill. And so I can take like like a, a nice lunch where I'm reading um, for like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. So I have like, I feel like I have a good amount of free time to read. 
where I don't feel like super like the world's going to end if if I'm not just constantly working because I know Emily works like constantly nonstop for like nine hours and um but for me I do have a little bit of like free time here and there where I can like pick it up so I will say I'm very fortunate that I do have the time to read when I do read and sometimes I feel guilty about it do you, do you ever get that like when you're playing games or you're like oh I feel like I wasted an hour yeah actually last week if you work with me you didn't hear this so I was on my break I usually have like 45 minutes of a break but that day it was just really getting to me like it wasn't fun at all so I just like went to go play my game for like my break because I was like I need to distract myself and just completely decompress so I'm playing I noticed that my my lunch is over But um, I look at my calendar that day and I was like, I pretty much worked because I worked really hard in the morning. I didn't take like my first break. I didn't really eat anything either. So I was working for like five hours straight. I was like, there's not really much left to do for the rest of the day. So I'm just going to keep playing. And I literally played from like 12 to 345. And then I just worked like the last 40 minutes of my day. But I just like went to my desk, wiggled my mouse every five, 10 minutes to see, to make sure that everyone knew that I was still available. And I just played my game. I turned my phone off and it, it was great. I think everyone deserves that time every once in a while. What's the point of a remote job? If not to just have a little free time here and there. Exactly. To just like and you can enjoy being in your home. You cannot tell me nobody else does that. I mean, I agree, but if you, if you work with me, I don't agree. I think that I think yeah. you're wasting the company's dollar. Exactly. If you, do if you have any and are in any way like a superior to me, I don't do that. This is just like this is just yeah, we're just kidding around. This is a joke. Yeah. This is actually a story that we're making up right now. This is but, a big space for us to talk But in this story that we're making up that if you don't work with me, you'll understand more than if you do work with me. Mm-hmm. There are times where I don't work 19 hours straight and it is i'm pretty sure it's a scientific study that you're supposed to take breaks in between like studying and working because your brain can't handle constant like information and work all the time like you need to give yourself a break and sometimes mine ends up being a couple hours and okay then that's what i needed that day i don't know if you've heard bernie sanders introduced a bill that would change the working hours for 40 hours to 32 because productivity has just increased since the last time that that um the 40 hours were initially established i think like it's increased by like 400 percent or something crazy so like it makes sense and a lot of other like developed nations i know have like shorter work weeks or value work-life balance when the united states doesn't they really so, don't so i i think that is amazing i know a lot of companies there are a lot of companies that um do four four day work weeks um, already, but um, that would be nice. My company has gone on record to literally say that we will never do four day work weeks because anytime we have like a meeting and they want to ask questions, that's it always comes up, and they're like, "No, we will never do that." There was a lot of internal conversations um, at my last company. I was working at like a payment processing company, and yeah, he was. The CEO was very much like, I like the idea, but we can't do it right now. And and I think that's just what they'll always say. So Yeah. Anyway, we're just work. Why are we talking about horses? work? I oh, know, crap. right? Let's go back to Dylan Mulvaney. What a bad song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wait, I'm I happy do- or no? I have something happy that, that brings me joy. I'm going to Coachella. Oh, period. I'm so excited. When is it? Is it coming up? April 17th. Oh, so it's coming. really soon. There are only two places in this world that have made me forget about work. That's Coachella <laughs> and the Philippines. So, I don't know. I think a lot of people like to make the claim that Coachella is like very influencer heavy and it's not really about the festival. And I think 
if you go with that mindset, then that's what you'll get. But like what other festival do you get to just run around in the desert and like do cartwheels on the grass if you want to? None. Like none. Like everywhere else is so crowded. Everyone's like on top of each other. But I can literally go take a nap in the field if I want to at any time. Like it's just like it's so freeing. And I'm so excited that we're going again. I feel like I I feel like next year I'm gonna make an I'm gonna make an effort and I'm gonna make myself go. Please. I feel like so I know fun. it's so expensive. But that I've always wanted to just because like for the environment, yeah. just for the just to say that I have, because every time you go, you always describe it as like the most amazing experience. And I feel like that needs to it needs to happen because you go every year. Yeah, so. we didn't go last year because we were on a cruise, but yes, it's so fun. It's so fun, and it has yeah. such a a diverse group of artists. Like you can really go for any type of vibe. Usually, a festival is like catered to one specific genre, but they really have everything. And they have like there's you- this new stage this year which I'm so excited to see. And all of the people that are performing on that stage are like some of my favorites. So I am very excited. Who are you most excited about? Oh, Doja Cat's going to be there? Um, Actually, I think, again, she is. Yeah, she's headlining. Yeah, there is a... So the new stage, that is what I'm most excited for because apparently the design concept is like a mirror so it's like the stage and then it mirrors on both sides. So it like reflects the sun and like all of the people in the crowd. So I just think it, it'll be a really cool visual to see like what that Ooh, looks interesting. Like. That's really funny. You'll just show me. Yeah. The only thing is that Russell and I have very different tastes in music. Like he's very much like R&B, hip hop, rap vibes. And I'm very much like dance electronic so i don't know if i have to split up at some point to go see someone that i want to see and he doesn't want to see i'll go i'll make friends with have, some random girl that's like high on mushrooms like okay. <laughs> have you seen those um tiktoks where like there's like now like rave like finders where like it'll point you to the direction of where your friend is and like if everyone has it like like it helps you find each other Interesting. because everyone always gets lost at like it's very easy festivals yeah because yeah. there's like no service and it's so crowded i know a lot some people bring walkie talkies instead of like cell phones because you can you just it's just a signal so if you don't have mm-hmm. signal on your phone you can still use a walkie talkie but i don't know sometimes it's fun to get lost like you get separated <laughs> and you're like i don't know anyone like that's next to me but it's okay. Like I'll find them. I'll, I'll make it out eventually. <laughs> you're in for that. You're you're poor things in it where you're just adventuring. Oh my god! I'm I watched it last night. Isn't it? Wasn't it yeah. so good? It was. It was. I would say it was a little too long for me. But other than that, amazing movie, perfect movie. Um, a little too many sex scenes. It was w- watching with the group. It was a little oh, too many sex scenes. Yeah, I get that. I watched it with my friends and my friend's husband. So we literally were just watching a porn like, oh, okay. for like You're having sex time. for the fourth time. Yeah. And so some of the like aggressive sex scenes, like I just get really uncomfortable with that. But um, it was like such a good movie. Like I can definitely see why she won awards on it. It was it, it was definitely cinema. When I when I yeah. if I were to recommend it to someone, I'd be like, it's very like very cinema. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to describe it. It's very like Frankenstein, but like not mm-hmm. in a more glamorous way. I don't know how to explain. It's like Frankenstein meets Flowers for Algernon meets Emma Emma Stone. I don't know. <laughs> she did great though. It meets very long wig. Oh my god! It just kept getting longer. No. It was so funny. I honestly I was like, want oh that. Like, do I have to jump off a bridge and then die and then have a baby's brain transplanted into my head in order to have my hair grow that fast? Because I'll do it. I want, honestly, goal is for hair. I want my hair that long. I was laughing a few times because when she would like twirl or move really fast, 
you could very well see that it was just like really long extensions that weren't really blended very well. But like, where would they find a wig that literally goes to her ankles? Like, yeah. not a lot of. That's not common. So I get it. I wait. I didn't even notice that there was like just like the movement of it. Was yeah, just like, like you could see like her extensions just there. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. But me, I don't know. Maybe she just wanted to get extensions on her vacation, and like that's what they were. And also, I love Rami. Like I've been such a fan of Rami for so long. Um, yeah, he has a show like on Hulu Rami. and then and then Emily and I saw him perform in Portland like do stand up yeah and so we were so excited about him um, doing this show and, or being in this movie and like it was just yeah it was so good the whole thing was just like it was like so outrageous so funny also like the universe it was set in it was like so weird like this the stage like I felt like I was it was like almost like in a way like that's yeah. how you see the world when you're like not right in your right state of mind. Yeah. May oh, I didn't even consider it to be that way, but like that makes sense. Yeah. Because she was like seeing everything as like like brand new. Yeah. It was it was like honestly there's a like lot of moral baby. dilemmas in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cause like he got engaged with her, but she wasn't even like mentally cog like she wasn't not cognitively like Oh, like, how is that okay? <laughs> There's ethics issues involved in yeah. this movie. <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, we're engaged. Like, I'll marry you, but I'm gonna go on this vacation with this other man, and you just have to wait until I come back." What does she call it? Something vigorous jumping, or yeah, like, what does she call it? Something like that. Jumping. That's how she described something it. jumping. Yeah, um, I think that we yeah, went it was vigorous jumping. It was. It was cute though. Um, like cute as in like it was like funny and I think like the idea of the movie was like really cool and powerful but um, I think it was a little too long and I could tell that like I, who di who directed this movie because it gave Triangle of Sadness like with the different like like there would be like Paris and it had like those yeah, different like different. breakups in the movie I don't remember what his name is but it felt like um, the Triangle of Sadness yeah, I love movies that are like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, he didn't do Triangle of Sadness because I'm like he. I feel like that's probably would make sense. But yeah, me too. I know that um, Barbarian sort of did that too, and um, I really like Barbarian as well. Barbarian is good too. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're like but yeah. media experts today, which I oh I know. Books. What's that movie about the the Holocaust that people are talking about? The Zone of Interest. I want to see that one really bad. I want to see Immaculate, the new horror movie with Sydney Sweeney. I heard it's actually really good. Is it? Is in theaters now? Isn't it, it? it just came out on Friday. Ooh, fun. Friday. Maybe I'll, maybe Emily and I have to go watch it tomorrow. I'm or like in need of a good horror movie. Yeah, same. It's so hard to come by a good one. Yeah. It's so disappointing nowadays being a horror fan. Because, yeah. like, nothing is really that good anymore, unfortunately. I feel like the last good horror movie I watched was... Honestly, the only one that I felt like was groundbreaking was Midsommar. I still haven't seen Midsommar. I need to watch it, I... like, really bad. Yeah, I think you should. I love it's like you, too. It's like making... Imagine making a horror movie, but it's, like... The it's like during it's the day, time. it's like a yeah, it's just daytime, yeah. and like it is so unsettling and in like such a good movie. Um, the one another A24 film, the one with the talk to me <gasps> that, that was really fucked, good. that one fucked me that up. That one is like <laughs> that was spooky. We watched it at night in our house, and I was having heart palpitations, like certain scary i think i might be too old for scary movies because i truly i worry about my heart i'm like i can't do this i'm so scared yeah that's what happens when you start to push 30 i guess i guess so you wake up with back pain and you can't watch scary movies yeah i realize this is kind of embarrassing i realized yesterday how unflexible i am and something about that Can you touch your toes I, I can't touch my toes um it's just because, like, I used to do karate. I used to be able to do the splits. I used to be able to kick my foot, like, up here. And now I can barely touch my toes. 
I feel like I'm trying to think what I feel like, yeah, um, stretching would probably just be like the, the main thing to do, but yeah. um, I'm, I'm wondering if I, I was a lot more flexible when I was younger too. I just think it's like, it, it comes with age. Your body just it gives does. up on itself. Yeah. And I think that's something that I just have to accept that it's okay. <laughs> I just have to like actually, sh- cause like when you're young, you don't really have to stretch and you are, you have like a good level of flexibility, but now if you're not stretching, then you can't, you're not going to be flexible. Yeah. I feel like I want to move to LA and if I do, we should do like Pilates. Wait, I want to do it so bad. I want to go to Pilates so don't bad. Know to, I don't want to go by myself. Something about yeah. going to a workout class when you don't know anyone completely by yourself is like embarrassing to me. Yeah, I agree. I, Emily and I did a yoga together and the people in Gainesville are sweet. <laughs> They're a little... They're a little too yogis, though. They're okay. like, to me, it's just like everyone's very spiritual and felt that way. They're very in line the with ones their chakra. Well. Yeah, versus I think in like LA, where it's probably more like an exercise class than anything else, than like spiritually yeah, focused. Yeah, like people will go to Pilates after being at the club until four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so it's not. I need that it's energy. Not really like that. Like I'm walking into this this yoga class. I'm pulling tarot cards. Like, <laughs> girl, let me just surround. That's so funny. Uh, but yeah, I I would love to do Pilates. That's sort of that's what I want to do. I am nervous as well, though. I don't really go anywhere by myself. So, I keep telling Emily we have we our lease ends next February. So it's a ways away, but yeah, I just want to leave. I don't like Florida. I'm out. I'm done. I mean, I'm here. We have to do all of the things that we've said that we would do if you moved to LA for the past five years. That we would I'll do. take you to Runyon because you've never gone to Runyon. Yeah, we can go to Runyon. We can the observatory. do more walks. We can have our multi-mile oh, long please. walks, obviously. I would love to. Do you like running? You do like running, don't you? Um, so I've realized, so I don't know. I walk on the sides of my feet and I realized that recently. And I don't know why I do that. I just think... I like my family has like really wide feet, so shoes like fit funny. So I think it's the easiest way for me to walk in certain shoes. But um, when I'm running, my like shins get all fucked up. So I've stopped oh. running recently. But um, I want to get back into it. I do twelve three thirties every day though. So I am on my treadmill doing my my Lauren yeah. Geraldo hike. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. I should be more active. I definitely should. Yeah, but do you want to do a running club? Were you a runner in high school? I was a runner. I love running. That was like my favorite form of exercise. But Russell doesn't like to run. Nobody that I know likes running either. Like that is their worst, their least favorite thing to do. And I don't want to run by myself. Could you do, were you like a long distance runner? I was, or was a long it distance more short? Runner. Yeah. I was That's on the so, I love that for people. I want. I wish that I could. I don't know what about me is. I don't know if it's just in my genes, but like for some reason, the most I could run is two miles. Well, the most I've ever ran was five miles, but like two miles was always like my limit before I was dying. Yeah, I don't know what I could do now. When I was like, when I was like a boy in my tip top <laughs> shape, I was hitting six fifty miles oh, or six forty, and now I, I, if I'd be lucky if I could get twelve minutes. Yeah, when I was in high school, I was able to run like a five minute mile. That's crazy. And then I still like ran a little bit when I was still work- lived in Washington uh, at Chambers Bay. That's where I w- used to go running. But my miles were like six and six or seven minutes. So I don't know if I actually think estrogen weakened me. Yeah. So or- anybody <laughs> saying that. And athletes have an advantage. I am proof that it doesn't. I have statistical proof to show that my running performance decreased. So, What shoes did you run in? Did you have like a preference in shoes? I guess I also would run in Vans. Because yeah, maybe that contributed to some of your to my pain. my shins with my I was so I'm, my grew up very poor and. Um, <laughs> I was only allowed a certain amount of shoes a year because it was expensive and I skateboarded a lot. And so I would just run in ripped vans Okay. because we like, I would go through shoes so fast and they were all skateboarding shoes. 
So that was definitely probably why. Yeah, you need running shoes. I think that would greatly improve the quality of your shins after a long Yeah, time. I bought I bought like um Nike running shoes and or I think they were, but the arch support was like too supportive or whatever. And it, it like ruined my feet. So I have to like I think I need to go to like one of those people that make like special soles for your shoes. Yeah. I think I'm just I'm okay. thirty. I'm You're special. Not, yeah. You need everything right. custom made, like it's fine. Are you flat footed too? Uh, no, I. Although, if you look at my feet, you could argue that it does look <laughs> like I have flat feet. But no, I do have um, a little arch that's there. My brother is flat footed. I'm flat footed. Oh, are you? Yeah. I got, and this is so random. But when I applied for college, I got I was offered like an ROTC scholarship, which I absolutely did not want to do, but was considering because they were like gonna pay for basically mm-hmm. all four years of college. So I had to go get a physical and the doctor told me I had flat feet and apparently you can't be like in this, like anything if you have, if you're flat footed. So I wasn't able to do it because I was flat footed. So it's kind of like yeah, a blessing you, in disguise. You can't get, you can't be in the, I, can't I don't know if you can't be in the military, but you definitely can't get drafted. Yeah. So so if you were to like step in a puddle of water and step in the cement, would it just be a flat foot? Yeah. You wouldn't see like a little arch? No. Like if you look like, at my foot on the floor, there's no space at all under my foot. It's that's crazy. It's just complete foot on the floor. <laughs> mine, yeah, mine has um, a little arch. It's not crazy, but it, it is a little one. But yeah. So I'm not getting dropped in. But if you were run a five minute mile, I, one could argue maybe that helped. Maybe, but I still can't get drafted. Yeah. I can run a five Why minute mile, but I can't. I can't get drafted. Period. So. Were you an ROTC in high school? No. <laughs> they were just like, "We'll pay you." Yeah, they, I don't know why I got offered that scholarship, but my parents were That's like, so funny. "Obviously, you don't want to do it, but they're willing to pay for college for you. So maybe you have to consider the option of like sucking it up." And I was like, "There's no way." That I'm going to go to ROTC every morning at 6 a.m. before I go to college. Hold your gun. There's no way in hell. That was never in the car so funny. Yeah, my my high school was very, like, everyone was in ROTC. And I'm just so lucky that I was like, "Mm, I'm not going to do that. Because I had so many friends in it that I was worried that was going to drag me along. But thankfully, the only embarrassing thing I did was be in marching band. That's better than ROTC. I don't know about your school, but the people in ROTC like scared me a little bit. The, yeah, they're all psychotic. <laughs> no offense if you're in ROTC, but <laughs> no, they okay. definitely was where like the school shooters would be. Yeah. So. Sorry for the ROTC standard. Yeah. I was about to say something else that was kind of mean, but I decided not to. <laughs> I think I know what you were going to say, <laughs> but you know. You know what? Hold on, I'm gonna text it to you. Okay. I don't have my phone. Wait, type it in the the chat. Okay, okay, okay. And then I'll tell you. I don't know what's going on today. We're being slightly problematic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I wasn't thinking that. Okay. Actually, I'm the one in the room. Okay, okay. Well, then we'll keep it going. We don't have to linger on it. Yeah. We love RTC. We do. We stand our military. Yeah, we love supporting, supporting the truth. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, let's see. I have little notes that I wanted to go over. Oh, we were talking about. I meant to bring it up when you were talking about Coachella, but we want to do a cruise. Oh my goodness. Um, and I. Yeah, so our friends like want to do a cruise with us, and I was like, I need to bring Gage because you love cruises, and who better to enjoy a cruise than with with you as well? Yeah, because I just feel like we just need a little vacation because when we did Lake Chelan, it was so fun, but like at the time, I just felt like I I got really sunburned, <laughs> and and you did I get- like I felt like. I feel like I didn't know how to handle myself. It was the first time I was like letting myself drink a little bit because I'm not a drinker and like smoke a little bit. And I just felt like I just was being like, I don't know, in my head, I was like, 
I felt like I could not handle my myself. But now I just wanna I just wanna get on a boat and I wanna get drunk and I wanna just have fun. And so. that is exactly what you can do on a cruise. That's the point of a cruise. <laughs> you just drink you all just day drink and, and just sit in the sun and chill on the boat. And then get off occasionally and go explore like a new country. Would you wanna do like stay in the United States or like go to Mexico or do you have like an idea as to where you'd want to go? I think they want to do like a short cruise. So okay. it'd probably be just like a Caribbean, like three day cruise, yeah. like to the Caribbeans. Mm. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I will, we're, we have to make a day to plan that. And um, yeah, I will let you know. Keep I'm you so informed on if you I will never say no to a cruise unless it's like a <laughs> Disney cruise and there's a bunch of kids running around and I don't want to do with that. Oh, I'm a baby. Yeah. I would, ideally it would be nice to have a cruise with no kids on it. Virgin, Voy- uh, Virgin Voyages is it's a little bit more expensive than like your average like Royal Caribbean or Carnival, but there's no kids. The food, like, oh, it it was like the best cruise experience. It's just a little bit more expensive, but okay. There is a Florida resident promotion of five percent, and I am here. a Florida I'm resident. Not, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll look into it, and I will let you know. Okay, Dominican days. There is one stewardess on Virgin Voyages that's currently running around with my Louis Vuitton bag, though. So that's my only. Did you get a bag stolen? So I I don't know if I told the story on the podcast. Basically, I don't think we were like checking out of our cruise, and when you're on a cruise, you don't really need to carry your purse because. You have like your key, everything is all attached to that key. So you don't need an ID or your cards or anything. So I, my purse was just sitting on the vanity that for the entire week that we were there. And when we were packing up, we left, but my purse was still on the vanity. So the second we got off the boat, I was like, oh my God, like I forgot my bag in our room. Can we go back and get it? And they were like, no, you can't get back on the boat after you get off, but we'll have like one of the uh, the staff members go over there to get it for you. And this was five minutes after we left the room. Apparently by the time that someone got there, they had already cleaned the room and my bag was not there anymore. And it wasn't taken to lost and found. So I'm thinking like what, where else did it go? Because I left it on the counter. And if someone didn't see it and take it to lost and found within that five minutes that I just left it there, Someone took it. I would have killed someone. I was so upset. I was like, you're kidding me. Like. Oh my God. Yeah. And that was like my first designer bag. My parents got it for me for Christmas, literally like four months before that happened. So now I'm very much not like a designer bag girl. I'm I, I'm <laughs> fine with going to like Target You know, I don't need all of that because I simply lost it within the first few months of having it. Actually, I didn't lose it. It was stolen. That's crazy. Because I knew where it was. And it was in my room, which was secure. The only people that go in there are the people that clean the room. Yeah. So she was like, oh, this bitch probably forgot about it. So I'm going to take it. And now she's running around with her her nice free Louis Vuitton bag. Did you have like your, your stuff, your cards and everything in so it? it? My car keys were in there and mm. some lip gloss. That's really it. I had my okay. wallet. I had everything else. But yeah. Did you have spare car keys? I do. I have like a key okay. fob and I have two of them. But I did lose like the fob to get in and out of our apartment. And mm. the replacement fee is $100 for that. That's that's fucked up. So I I've never replaced it. I just we share one now because I'm not paying a hundred dollars mm-hmm. for a key fob. Yeah. Emily and I share one too because they only gave us one, and I don't even want to ask. So that was but my yeah, only issue crazy. with Virgin Voyages, but the rest of the trip was absolutely amazing. Well, I'm gonna look into it because I would love to um, go to the Caribbean or something with you. Let's That'd be go. so fun. Let's freaking go. I'm so down. Um, yeah, I will keep you updated. Actually, let me text them now. <laughs> I want to be like, when are we planning this cruise? Is this like a girl? Are we serious? Or like, I will let you know because okay. um, 
because you know I um, my our friend's husband might come, and then and then yeah, I will let you know. But if anything, I think if you want Russell and you want to come, I think that's fine. Okay, I will let them know. But we yes. are planning. To- oh my god, we can record an episode on the cruise. That would be so fun. We still haven't done our high episode, which we said that we would do years ago. When you first came to LA, we said we would do a high episode. And that was in like, what, 2020? 2020? I don't know if I could function. That's you true. know how goofy I get. Why am I like that? Maybe I'll do it. Some, like wine. No, I'll do it. No, because I think alcohol is worse. I'll okay. have one glass of like, of like, of like a, a, a gin and basil drink. At our like local bar, and I'm like fucked for like, like an hour. <laughs> yeah, for on just one drink, and like I like get so silly, and it not like a good is, silly word. Like a, a good thing. Well, not. I guess it depends on how you look at it. Like, it doesn't take much to get you there, but we'll 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 do a high episode, um, uh, and we'll, we'll it'll be fun. It'll be okay. it'll be. Interesting. We can drink those um non-alcoholic seltzers. I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't do anything at all. So fucked up. I have been. I've been enjoying the fact that like, I've been like getting into like I've been getting into drinking more. It's so silly, and it, I feel like I'm 27 years old. I should not be like experimenting or like trying alcohol for like the first time and getting to enjoy it now. It's never too. Late. But um, yeah, we Emily's coworkers bought us like a nice bubbly for um our anniversary, like an anniversary gift. And um, ever since, I'm like, oh, I just think like I really like like bubbly wines. So we've been getting like um, rosé proseccos or like champagne. Yeah. And then like have making like nice mixes with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's been really nice. So I've been getting a little a little tipsy here and there. Hey. What is it? You're done recording, right? Oh no, oh, no. alcohol. I'm just kidding. That- Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Cut that out, please. It, it's time. <laughs> Okay, barista, okay, personal you, barista. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with that being said, we can um end um this yeah. episode. Yeah. I do want to talk about Drag Race for a second, though. I haven't so. watched the ex- the episode, but you can spoil it for me. I already know who goes home. Okay, <laughs> I I will say I'm upset, but I I will I will. I know that you're. I'll upset. keep that to myself. Yeah. Okay. Let me hold on. Let me find our Patreon because I always forget the name of the people that I have to shout out who are amazing. Um, Nicole. Love Nicole. Yes, Nicole. We sl- slay Nicole. Queen Nicole. Um, yes. So uh, with that being said, uh, we will talk with you guys in the ne- or see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.